Hi, good evening, everybody, and welcome to Tucker Carlson tonight. In case you haven't noticed, I am not Tucker Carlson. I'm Brian Kilmeade. It's my privilege to fill in for Tucker, who claims to be on vacation with his family. We need to see photos. Meanwhile, on a serious note, America's most distant possession is under threat. North Korea's state media warns that its army is planning potential attacks on Guam in islands of uh, Guam Islands and less than 200,000 people in the Western Pacific. Is this a real threat? The story just moved a short time ago, and here it is. North Korea's state-run media, which is like North Korea's government, said North Korea is ready to attack Guam by mid-August? The initial threats came shortly after President Trump warned that any aggression from the North Korean dictator Kim Jong-un would be met with annihilating force. North Korea best not make any more threats to the United States. They will be met with fire and fury like the world has never seen. He has been very threatening uh, beyond a normal statement. And as I said, they will be met with fire, fury, and frankly, power, the likes of which this world has never seen before. Thank you. Sick of 24 minutes, this story. How much of a threat does North Korea actually pose? How much force would be needed to actually defeat them? Up next, we're going to talk to a retired Army colonel about those important questions, and he has the answers. Plus, Mark Stein will be here to discuss the politicizing reaction to North Korea's aggressive conduct and the president's comments. Those two disagree about the guy in the middle. I know you think you know the North Korean story, but it's moving. Uh, this time, a short time ago, in the escalating situation with North Korea, there are new threats from that country uh, through their uh, national media. They are now saying they're going to fire four missiles at Guam or near Guam. Their generals present a strike plan to Kim Jong-un, if you're to believe him, sometime in mid-August. That's next week. Trump warns of fire and fury. We know that yesterday. They responded again to the North Koreans by saying Trump's warning is, quote, a load of nonsense. North Korea's military says absolute force can work on someone bereft of reason like Donald Trump. So they're mocking our president. How and will the United States respond? What is the correct response here? After all, as long as this conflict has taken place, we might be in uncharted waters. We're joined right now by retired U.S. Army Colonel Douglas McGregor. And Colonel, if I'm going to believe your May 3rd column, you believe the whole answer to this conundrum and this challenge is China. Do you still believe that? Oh, yes, absolutely. But it's not just China. We also have to work closely with our Korean ally, uh, President Moon of the Republic of uh, Korea. And I, I want to get back to that in a minute. But first, let me dismantle some of these uh, ridiculous claims. First, President Trump's absolutely right. In the early 1990s, when this issue was boiling over once again in North Korea, and they had begun trying to develop nuclear weapons, General Colin Powell, former chairman of the Joint Chiefs, stated quite clearly publicly, if a nuclear weapon is ever launched by North Korea, we will turn the country into a parking lot. The North Koreans know that to be the case. Right. They are frightened. So let's get that off the table. Secondly, these missiles that they're talking about, the four of them, are, are liquid fuel rockets from the 1970s. This is old technology. It's not precise. They couldn't hit Guam. They couldn't hit anything with any reliability. And as far as the range is concerned, they can't carry any warheads and hit anything because the rockets will run out of fuel long before they ever got close to Guam. And Guam is 2,100 miles from North Korea. We've been treated to these kinds of boasts and hot air for a very long time. Right. So the, we need to dismiss a lot of this. Finally, North Korea is in a lot of trouble right now. They're in the midst of a very severe drought. They, not only are they having trouble feeding their own population, they can't feed their own troops. The equipment in North Korea goes back to the 60s and the 70s. They have very, very few modern weapons. So the bottom line is we need to stop uh, imputing to North Korea capability that isn't there. We need to stop underestimating South Korea, and we need to talk to right. the South Korean president. A couple of things. First off, when it comes to South Korea, they had this liberal leader elected, and I can't, do, I can't do a dissertation on Korean politics. I'll give you that. But, man, he has changed his tone, hasn't he? When he originally said, I don't know about the THAAD missile system, I'm going to do an environmental study. So meanwhile, while they were examining whether a frog would live or die if the missile system was put in, they suddenly realized the threat got to a point where they need it right away. So that he's become very compliant, and I believe that alliance has been reinvigorated. But if you want to get the attention of China, 
could you, uh, who gives them all their oil and provides them with a lot of their banking and investment. Could you start to bulk up with additional missiles? You start to have additional military presence. You go give Japan more defensive missiles. That is China's no. nightmare. Wouldn't you agree? And that would get no. them to crack down on their client. No, absolutely not. If you do those things, China will walk away from you. Because neither China nor South Korea nor Japan want a war in Northeast Asia. You're talking about building up for a war. The last thing we should do is launch any strikes or respond in any way whatsoever to these hollow threats. China would much prefer to do business with Seoul. China loathes North Korea. Right now, China has massed troops on the North Korean border, the best troops they have. They held naval exercises last week which were directly threatening Korea. They've made it very clear if the Koreans go down this road, they will engage North Korea. So that's the wrong answer. This is not something we should involve ourselves in. We need to talk really? to this new you president. You want us just to back out of there and just listen, say, just Brian, ignore them? Listen, Brian, we need to talk to President Moon. He has a strategy. He is our ally. He has 50 million people to be concerned about in the South and another 25 million Koreans north of the DMZ. He doesn't want any of them to die. We should not do anything unless we consult right. with him. Okay, um, I will say this, Colonel, and unfortunately we're up against it, but if they were serious about cracking down, they would tell their banks don't do business in North Korea until they start denuclearizing, but they haven't seriously done that, although I am encouraged about what happened Sunday. Well, I think you would find that uh, right now North Korea's nightmare is Chinese intervention, and the Chinese have made very clear what they will not tolerate. We need to talk to China about reuniting that peninsula under Seoul right. and be prepared to withdraw our forces in order to give China an incentive to cooperate Absolutely. with us. Yeah, Colonel, I'm up against it, but that's a great point. I would love for them to do that. We would leave. We'd love to do it, but not with a North Korea as belligerent as they are. Colonel, thanks, and thanks for your service. Instead of uniting behind the president, some Republicans are bashing the president Then his handling of the North Korean situation. Up next, Mark Stein is here. While Republicans remain divided over the president, Mark Stein's not pictured here. He's actually better looking than all three. Welcome back, everybody. Hey, members of the president's own party are divided over his response to North Korean continued aggression. For example, Senator John McCain and Lindsey Graham usually agree on everything. They're best buddies, but they aren't singing the same tune here. The great leaders that I've seen, they don't threaten unless they are ready to act. Yeah. And I'm not sure that President Tr Trump is ready to act. President Trump has basically drawn a red line saying that he'll never allow North Korea to have an ICBM missile that can hit America with a nuclear weapon on top. He's not going to let that happen. He's not going to contain the threat. He's going to stop the threat. Fascinating. Meanwhile, the media is more obsessed with the president's choice of words than the actual threat of war. You don't think that um, the president's comments are at odds with those of the secretaries, or is this kind of a good cop, bad cop routine? The president's language implied the use of nuclear force. Did the secretary have any early warning? The president of the United States threatening a nuclear armed Country. Let's consider what is alarming. What is alarming, two ICBM tests in less than a month, two nuclear tests that took place last year. As a matter of fact, when there's an earthquake in China, I get many emails and calls from all of you asking, was it another nuclear test? That is how big of a deal this is. Since I know Heather Nauert a little bit, I think she was flabbergasted at the uh, fact is, uh, Mark Stein, that nobody was asking about the threat of North Korea and how this might be different from ever before. Yeah. She was exasperated by it. Or were you? Yeah, and she's right to be exasperated by it. I mean, this is, this is like some uh, lame joke. You know, what, what's the difference between uh, Donald Trump and Kim Jong-un? One's an out-of-control, crazy psycho guy, and the other's the respected president of North Korea. They're actually uh, arguing. Uh, about the president's rhetoric at a time when a, uh, a government has made an explicit threat to nuke 
U.S. territory. These these guys sound. These guys are the crazy ones. But they act like President Trump is the only one to ever have challenging yeah. words for a persistent threat. Yeah. Do you remember Gaddafi? Remember what Reagan right, right. said? The Mad Dog of the Middle East. Yeah. They said he said he was a flake. Right. They were willing to back our president at the time because it was a threat to our country. What has happened? Well, I think what has happened is that people are generally uh, not as serious about these things. I mean, the, the conversation of, on, on North Korea is slightly. People are arguing about whether he can merely uh, nuke Guam or whether he can nuke Boston. I mean, these are absurd differences. The fact is the sane house-trained politicians right. have spent a quarter century allowing us to get to this point. And, and, and that's why we're at a hellish point. So I talked to Senator Lindsey Graham on the radio yeah. today, and Senator McCain has always been a guest. I actually think Senator McCain would be a great pro, would have been a great president, mm. and I always appreciate the way he was willing to confront the threats on America. Right. It was the same Senator McCain that called Kim Jong-un a short, fat kid. Right. And, and just mocked him. He's right. chairman of armed services. Yeah. Why is that okay? And the president saying this threat has to be confronted the way he says fire and fury. Why is that not okay? Okay. No, and, and uh, John McCain was also the guy who was doing the bomb, 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 bomb Iran yeah. jokes uh, a couple of years ago as well. And what I think what we have to remember here is that it's not a time uh, to argue about rhetoric. Exactly. This is this is actually something real. We we are in a state of the world now uh, where a uh, a regime that does not uh, uh, respect maxims of prudence it is an economic basket case has somehow managed to become a nuclear power right. on Bill Clinton, George W. Bush, and Barack Obama's watch. Strategic patience didn't work. No. He handed this president a grenade and pulled the pin to Barack right. Obama, and he might even have known about the miniature of the nuclear warheads as early as 2013. Right. That's another story. The other one is the, this country elected a president more confrontational than the previous one. They elected a professor after they thought the president prior was too much of a cowboy. Right. Right. Respect what the people put in the dugout. Abs absolutely. And in fact, I don't think it hurts at this moment for the uh, United States to be perceived as slightly unpredictable. Right. If you could think no one fights the crazy guy in the back of the bar, no, even no. if they're muscle guys. No. And if you think back to Mullah Omar and, uh, and Osama bin Laden sitting in their tent uh, or outside Kandahar and Tora Bora on September 10th, 2011, uh, America had overwhelming power and uh, could have used it to right. destroy Afghanistan, and yet those guys had no fear that it would happen. Mark Stein, thank you so much. Always great to see you. When we come back, we wrap things up in just a moment.